Good morning, everyone. I'm so happy that you're here. Today's lesson is on cooperation, and it's why cooperate. So we're going to open with our offertory blessing, and you can hold your money or your heart or just hold your hand together and say, Divine love through me blesses and multiplies all the good I am and have, all the good I give and receive. Love is something if you give it away, give it away, give it away. Love is something if you give it away, you end up having more. It's just like a magic penny, hold on tight and you won't have any. Lend it, spend it, and you'll have so many, they'll roll all over the floor. Love is something if you give it away, give it away, give it away. Love is something if you give it away, you end up having more and more and more and more and more. All right. So remember that we can always give of our, do you remember what the three things are? That's right. Time, talent, and treasure. And time can be a variety of things. Talent might be something as simple as opening a door for somebody that can't open one. And, or it might be something like singing, if you're a great singer. Uh, treasure can be giving of your old toys or passing some things down from you, maybe to your younger sibling or giving it to a family in need. So there's lots of ways to give. Now we're going to do our gratitude shakers. Today I am grateful for my family. What are you grateful for? All right. So our lesson is on cooperation and the principle that it is focused on is I create my experiences by what I choose to think and what I feel and believe. And our affirmation is working and playing together is fun. I cooperate. Let's say that together. Working and playing together is fun. I cooperate. And our scripture that we're going to use for this lesson is, again, truly I tell you, if two or more, or two of you agree on earth about anything you ask, it will be done for you by my Father in heaven. Matthew 18, 19. And so today we're going to read from our Bible, and it is in the New Testament. Where Jesus calls his disciples. Okay. Jesus was living and teaching in Capernaum, a town by the Sea of Galilee. One day, as he was walking by the shore, he saw two fishing boats drawn up on land, their owners nearby cleaning and mending their nets. Jesus stepped onto the nearest boat and began talking to the crowds that soon gathered. After a while, he said to the boat's owner, Simon Peter, let us go out a little way onto the lake. When they were a short distance from the land, Jesus told Simon Peter, and his brother Andrew to throw their nets into the water. But there are no fish, they said. We have fished all night and caught nothing. However, they did as Jesus told them, and their, to their astonishment, their nets filled instantly with such a weight of fish that they were unable to pull them up. They signaled to their partners in the other boat to help them, and together they hauled, the, nearly breaking the nets on board. <clears throat> when the two brothers saw the miraculous catch, they and their friends James and John, the sons of Zebedee, fell down on their knees, terrified. But Jesus said, Do not be afraid. Come follow me, and I will make you fishers of men and women. So having brought their boats back to the shore, they left their nets and tools of their trade and followed Jesus. 
Jesus traveled with his disciples through Galilee, preaching in the synagogues, spreading the word of God, and treating the sick. Men and women with every kind of illness and disease, some paralyzed, some epileptic, others racked with pain or tormented by horrific dreams, all came to be healed. People came from far and wide to hear him speak, not only from Galilee itself, but from Jerusalem, Judea, and from way beyond Jordan. One day Jesus passed a man called Matthew, a collector of taxes. He worked for the ruling Romans and so was distrusted by the people. Jesus said to him too, Come, follow me. And Matthew, without a word, left his post and followed him. When Jesus returned to his house and sat down to dinner with his companions, a throng of people came to join him, many of them well known as sinners. The Pharisees, shocked to see this good man in such bad company, questioned some of his friends. Why does your master mix with rascals like these? But Jesus heard their sneering words and replied, It is not the healthy who need a doctor, but the sick. I have not come to ask good men to change their ways, but the sinners, for it is they who need me. Jesus went alone on to the top of a high mountain, where he stayed all night in prayer. The next day he called his followers together and chose chose 12 of them to be his disciples. To each one he gave a special powers of preaching and healing. The 12 were Simon, Peter, and his brother, Andrew, James, and John, the sons of Zebedee, Philip, Bartholomew, Thomas, Matthew, the tax collector, James, Thaddeus, Simon, the zealot, and Judas, is. Garriott. Jesus, this is a picture of Jesus, chose 12 disciples to whom he gives special powers of preaching and healing. And this is Jesus asks Matthew, a collector of taxes, to come and follow him. And over here is fishing. It's a picture of someone fishing. Fishing was an important industry around the Sea of Galilee. Lines and hooks were sometimes used as above, but nets were more common. At least four of Jesus' twelve disciples were fishermen. And up here, this is Jesus tells Peter and Andrew to cast their nets into the water, and the nets were filled with fish. All right, so what do we know about Jesus in this story? That's right, we know that Jesus was traveling and he was preaching and that he was healing the sick. Now, what do we know about the fishermen? So the fishermen, why didn't they really want to cast their net again? That's right, they weren't catching any fish. And when they did cast their net because Jesus told them to, what happened? That's right, they got so many fish, it was heavy and they needed help, right? And so, were they proud at that moment and like happy or were they, how were they feeling? That's right, they were a little scared. And so, they didn't realize the power of God, right? Not yet, anyways. Now, <clears throat> when Jesus tells them to put away their nets and come follow him, what do they do? That's right. And then who's another person that he tells to just stop what they're doing and come with him? Matthew. Matthew was one of them. And do you remember what Matthew's job was? He was a tax collector. That's right. And so he picks these different men. Now, when he is finally sitting down and they're kind of all together, do you remember what some of the people are saying? That's right, they're asking, why would you associate with these people? They're like, mm, I don't know. They're not really the kind of people I would want to be hanging around, right? They're kind of rascals, is what they were saying. And so, what does Jesus tell them? That's right. It's not the healthy that need the doctor, right? And he's not there to help those who are already doing really well. He's there to help those 
who are in need of help, right? So, and he mentions that they were sinners. Does anybody remember what the term sinner comes from? That's right. It means to miss the mark in archery. So archery was when you would hold like a bow and arrow and you'd aim it at a target. And so sinner meant that you missed that mark, missed the dot. You didn't quite get it right. And so sometimes in life we make mistakes, we make bad choices, and we miss our mark. We miss what we're trying to get, right? And we don't do things necessarily the right way. And we have to do it again, and we have to figure out how to make it right. Right? All right. So, now our creative expression today is going to be making a cartoon. And so I kind of have a cartoon book just so that you can see an idea of what it looks like. And so this is Calvin and Hobbes. And he says, to make instant fun, and you see he's filling up a water balloon. He says, just add water. <laughs> and he's running with the balloon. He's laughing from behind the trees. <laughs> Looking for someone. His cat friend is tapping him on the head. You see that? Uh, who? Me? Ha ha ha. Um, no. I mean, yes, but someone else. He, <laughs> not you. Here's a hypothetical question you should ask yourself. If you knew today was going to be your last day on earth, would you do something different? He's asking Calvin. Especially if by doing something different, today might not be your last day on earth. See, he's still holding the balloon. I don't think that question was very hypothetical at all as he stomps off with his balloon. So, this is an example of a comic strip. And the reason that's important is because today's activity is if our animals could talk cartoon. And so in today's story, <coughs> God helped the, um, helped everyone get the fish and they were working together, right? They were cooperating. And so what if our animals could talk and cooperate with us? So we're going to draw a picture of our favorite pet, our animal, and we're going to show them cooperating with us. And so I'm sure your cartoons will be better than mine. If you have young friends at home, you can do this together, or maybe they'll draw the picture and you can just write the words in the bubble. Now it could just be one picture, or it could be a series of pictures, kind of like Calvin and Hobbes. So mine is me walking my dog, Coco, and saying, oh no, that's gonna take forever to move those sticks by myself. And then Coco says, we can do it together. And then we move the sticks together. And I say, thank you, Coco. It's fun working together. So you can make your cartoon look however you'd like. Now, another activity that we can do together, and it depends on the ages. You could use different puzzles. You could use a big puzzle to do together as a family. So maybe like a 200-piece puzzle or something to work together as a family. Or you can use a smaller puzzle like this. Rua, can you come help me with my puzzle? Yeah. Let's see. Let's find the pieces to put together. Do you know where this one goes? Right here. See, like I'll match up the green. Let's see. I like this one. 
I'm okay, okay. I think this one goes here. I think this is boring. Together to put a puzzle together at home? I like to. Okay. Alright, so, ooh, take a deep breath in. And what, how do we center ourselves? Do you remember, Roro? Mm -hmm. Squeeze. Take a slow squeeze. Oh, I know I never got done. Okay, can you squeeze? Take a deep breath in and blow it out. No, it kind of still take a deep breath. That's right, blow it out, right? Okay, now we're centered. As we saw today, cooperation can be fun and it makes us feel good inside too. Let's affirm by saying today's affirmation together. I'll say it first, and then you can repeat after me. So we'll say it two times. Oh, Mom, I think I want to do this again, Mom. Okay, we'll do it right after our affirmation. Let's say our affirmation together. Okay. Working and playing together is fun. I cooperate. All right, let's say that together. Can you say it with me, Ruan? Uh-huh. Working and playing. Working and playing. Together is fun. Together is fun. I cooperate. I can do it. That's right. Now uh, do it again. Okay, let's do the light of God surrounds us. We're gonna do our closing prayer. The light of God surrounds us. The love of God enfolds us. The power of God protects us. And the presence of God watches over us. Wherever we are, God is, and all is well. Now I can. Amen. We'll see you next time. Have a great week. Can you wave goodbye? Goodbye.